Hello everyone, my name is Seth, and today I want to talk about Sony's Spider-Man live-action universe. So this might seem like a strange topic to kind of begin with, but they just released the new Craven trailer, and that movie is supposed to come out in October, and that has brought up a whole bunch of other thoughts that I've had ever since really Sony's kind of been putting out some of these live action Spider-Man movies, but you know, without Spider-Man just kind of as villains. So just today I'm, I might ramble a little bit on kind of my thoughts on what's exactly going on there. But before I go any farther, go ahead and like this video, hit subscribe and hit the bell icon. So you never miss a video. So first off, I want to go ahead and say this whole Sony Spider-Man live action universe that they've been doing, it, I, I, it depends on which side you fall on, really. You know, there's some people that actually do really like it. There's some people that really don't like it. You can kind of tell that from the audience and critic scores, the audience on most of these movies tend to give it a higher score than the critics do, but you kind of mix them all together. And I, I kind of feel like it's almost kind of 50, 50 on whether you find people who like it versus don't like it, at least in my experience. And I would say financially, for the most part, I'd say at least for the first Venom movie, financially it did well, but let's take a look here at some of the Rotten Tomatoes scores and some of the kind of the critic consensus on some of these movies first we got venom that has a 30 percent from the critics but an 80 percent from the audience uh the critics say that venom's first standalone movie turns out to be like the comics character in all the wrong ways chaotic noisy and in desperate need of a stronger attachment to spider-man venom let there be carnage did a little bit better with the critics but overall it still has a rotten score critics say it is a sequel aimed squarely at the fans of the original Odd Couple chemistry, Venom Let the Recarnage eagerly embraces the franchise's sillier side. So basically they're saying, if you like the first one, you'll probably like the second one. And that just about reflects in the audience score. Then next up, you have Morbius, which did not fare as well with both the critics and audiences. Morbius overall has a 16% on Rotten Tomatoes and the critics say that it is cursed with uninspiring effects, wrote performances, and a borderline nonsensical story. This dream mess is a vain attempt to make Morbius happen, and the audience ends up giving it a 71%. So overall, the audience has gave these three a better score, much better score than the critics. But like I said earlier, in my experience, I feel like it's kind of 50-50. I would say I end up leaning more towards the critics' side than I do with the audiences. I just don't think that these are as good as they could or should be. And now, here with the Craven trailer, I'm going to be honest, I did not like the trailer. Follow me on Twitter if you haven't already, but on Twitter, I already said, I think the trailer looks pretty bad, honestly. And it kind of seems like that they're going to make him an anti-hero like they have with the other movies with Venom and with Morbius. And also this past week, Sony's kind of quietly removed El Muerto from the release schedule and it came out that Bad Bunny has left the project. I don't necessarily think that that is a good idea of a film to begin with. When they first announced it at CinemaCon, I believe it was last year, I did not understand the reasoning for it. I understand you get really a, a big star in Bad Bunny, but he's not really an actor. He was in Bullet Train, didn't have a ton to do, and Sony was planning on banking on him as the lead in this. And also, if I'm not mistaken, I believe El Muerto maybe has appeared in like 
three or four issues of Spider-Man comics, at least at the time of the movie announcement. And so I would say kind of as a whole, one of the biggest issues with the whole Sony live action Spider-Man villain verse is that it's kind of bad decision making. I think they're turning all of these characters into anti-heroes and it kind of seems like from the trailer we have to wait till the movie comes out the movie might be awesome it might just be a bad trailer but it kind of seems like the craven movie is doing the same thing it's changing a whole lot about the character in order to make him more of an anti-hero and i just don't think that that's gonna work personally i don't think it's really worked for the other ones one thing i think might would be more interesting that they could have done or could do in the future is keep these characters as villains but still have them be the protagonist because you can have a villain be the protagonist a lot of people associate protagonist with the hero and antagonist with the villain but that's not necessarily a rule i think it would be interesting to really explore some of these characters as villains and it would be Honestly, kind of interesting to almost do like a reverse of a story here if they didn't want to go and just make another Spider-Man movie, which I'll get to that in a second. They could almost have Spider-Man show up just a little bit and be like the antagonist to this character's story. I think that would make that really interesting. Something... Kind of like uh, Batman is sold on Arkham, the animated movie. It was really interesting how they did that. You focus on the Suicide Squad, some of those members and some of the villains, and Batman shows up periodically kind of as the antagonist to these characters we're following. And I think that's really interesting. I think that would be their chance to do something really different with these movies. And you can have these characters be closer to the comic book counterparts. Coming back to them making their own Spider-Man movies, like I mentioned earlier, I just think that would be a good idea. Instead of trying to focus on these anti-heroes, these Spider-Man villains, I think it would be really cool to explore different versions of Spider-Man. Even if you don't want to give us a Amazing Spider-Man 3, which I would be all for. I know I might sound like a, just like a fan right now, but I think that that would be a good idea. And it seems like Andrew Garfield would be up for it. They've proven that they could tell good Spider-Man stories. Yeah, they've released, in my opinion, some bad Spider-Man movies, kind of like Venom and Morbius and Amazing Spider-Man 2, Spider-Man 3 but they've given us some really good ones, especially you're talking about the animation with Into the Spider-Verse and Across the Spider-Verse. They've proven that they can tell really good Spider-Man stories. And so you don't have to get rid of the Tom Holland Spider-Man. You can have two live-action Spider-Man at the same time. I 100% that they should continue their partnership with Marvel with Disney, and it seems like that that's what they're going to do, and Tom Holland can continue to be that Spider-Man, but we're all acquainted with the Spider-Verse at this point, so why not give us Amazing Spider-Man 3? Why not just tell a completely new Spider-Man story? Doesn't even have to be Peter Parker. You could give us a live-action Hobie Brown Spider-Punk, with the popularity of her character in the Spider-Verse movies, you could give us a live-action Spider-Gwen story. I feel like that would probably be successful. You could give us, like, a Kane or a Ben Riley, or even, like, a full-fledged 2099 or Spider-Man Noir. Some of these might be a little bit redundant to the Spider-Verse movies in terms of having the character again, but you can build your own world and have the character still be different and separate from the Spider-Verse movies and you could really do that really cool in live action. I will give them some credit. They are 
developing a silk series with Amazon. And I think that that has the potential to be really, really cool. I think Silk is a cool character and it kind of seems weird that they're developing a live action series, but I think that is exactly what I'm kind of looking for and suggesting here. And I know you might want to keep the focus on Miles Morales for the Spider-Verse movies, but who's to say you can't give us a different version of Miles Morales and give us kind of a new live action Miles Morales story. Like there's so much that they can do there. I really feel like some of the stuff with like Craven or El Muerto is kind of missing the target a little bit, at least for me and what I would want as a Spider-Man fan. Another thing that I will give them credit on is they are doing a Madam Web, which seems kind of weird. I don't exactly know how that's going to work, but kind of what's come out about it, kind of, I guess, some of the leaks, some of the set pictures, looks like there are going to be some spider people there in the movie, and so that'll be potentially interesting, and it kind of seems like they're telling like a Terminator kind of story with the Madam Web movie, which, again, could be interesting, and they're involving spider people, which is exactly kind of what I've been saying, you know, don't necessarily focus on the villains unless you're actually going to make them villains and maybe even have Spider-Man as an antagonist in the movie. Just give us different versions of Spider-People. I think that would be really cool. And again, maybe I'm just speaking more as a fan instead of like a film critic or whatever, but I feel like that might solve a little bit of Sony's Spider-Verse, Spider-Man less universe, you know? But those are just some of my thoughts just off the top of my head. Let me know what you think of the live action Sony, not Spider-Man movies. I'd love to hear your opinions down below. Did you like Venom and Morbius? Do you think Kraven looks really good? Let me know in the comment section below. And also let me know what you think about that. Would you love to see a live action Miles Morales, live action Spider Gwen? Would you love to see just different versions like that? Are you excited for Silk? Let me know in the comment section below. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Go ahead and follow me on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, at CinemaZeth, basically wherever you can think of. I'm probably there online. But before you go, go ahead and like this video. Hit subscribe and hit the bell icon so you never miss a video. And I'll see you next time.